In this video, I'm going to show how you can create a PDF of a page in your Bubble app. So you'll see here, I'm on the invoice page. I'm displaying some dynamic data. This is how it looks in my editor. I've set it up with a few text elements, a few groups, a few logos, nothing too complicated. But if I go to this dashboard page, which is a separate page in my app, and I click on the Generate Invoice button, what you'll see is I'm generating a PDF of that page, and I'm going to be able to download it in my browser here, open it up, and you can see we have our PDF of our page. The first thing I want to show is just the setup of my invoice page. So if I go to the page I'm PDFing, which is this invoice page, you'll see here that I have a pretty basic structure. I have a group with some data inside it, and then I have a bit of a footer down here. And if we click on the page itself, you'll see that I'm setting the type of content on the page to be invoice. This is important because we obviously want to dynamically display this data for our invoices. But this is what we're doing. We're creating a PDF of this page from another page of our app. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be using PDF Potion. This is a product developed by Cranford Tech. And in order to use this in your Bubble app, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the Plugins tab of your Bubble Editor and search for the PDF Potion plugin. You can simply search for PDF Potion and it should show up there. And then once you've done that, you're going to need an access token. And the way you get that is just by going to the register slash sign in page and signing up for an account. And then once you sign up for an account, you're going to have access to the PDF Potion dashboard. And if you go to the My Account tab here, what you'll see is you have the option to generate an access token. Once you do that, you can simply copy and paste that access token and paste it into these two input fields here in the plugin section of your editor. Please note you'll use the same access token for both the dev and the live environments. So now that we PDF Potion set up, we're going to go back to our dashboard tab. And I'm just using some hidden groups here, so I'm just going to show them pretty quickly. So what I have here at the moment is we have a repeating group with a bunch of jobs. Job is a custom data type that I've created in my database. Just taking a look at that. You can see each job has a cost, a name, and a status. And we just have a few sample jobs in there at the moment. You can see there are three of them. And what we want to do is we want to take these jobs and convert that invoice page and populate the details of the invoice with what's in our database here. So what we're going to do to start off is we're simply going to go to this Generate Invoice button. And we're going to go to Edit Workflow. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create new thing and the new thing we're going to create is an invoice and again if we look at invoice which is a custom data type i've created you'll see it has some kind of similarities to the job type in the sense that there's also a cost name and a quantity there as well but we also have customer name and a link now a link is key because this is actually going to be the url link to the pdf we create of the page but we'll come on to that in a minute so we're going to simply create an invoice in step one, and let's see what fields we can fill out now. So we can use the pair and groups jobs details here to fill out a few of these fields. So for example, for the cost, we can do pair and groups jobs cost. For job name, we can do pair and groups jobs name. Job quantity, I'm simply going to set as one. And then customer name, I'm going to set as just ABC Corp for now. Okay, we're going to leave link blank for the moment. So we've created our new invoice, and then we're going to go down to plugins, and we're gonna to go to create PDF. This is an action that comes with PDF Potion. And you can see here, there's actually quite a lot of fields that you can use. There's a ton of ways of customizing your PDF, including a lot of behavior around page breaks, but we're gonna keep it really simple for now, and just set out the fields that we absolutely have to in order to generate our PDFs. The very first field we need to fill out is this website home URL. And what that is, as you can see from the documentation here, is simply the dynamic expression website home URL. The page name is going to be the name of the page in our bubble app that we're converting to a PDF. And you might remember that the name of the page we're converting to a PDF is invoice. So I'm simply going to type in invoice. Identifier. So we're going to eventually link the PDF to a database entry and in order to do that we need to have some sort of unique identifier 
So what we're going to put in the identifier field here is simply the unique ID of the invoice that we're creating in step one. That's one of the reasons we actually created before the create PDF action, so we have access to its unique ID. And for the file name, I'm just going to do invoice for now. Okay, you'll see here I do have an outstanding issue, which is that the callback URL is not filled in. I can generate the PDF and view it in my file manager without that, so I'm going to do that for now, just so you can see what it looks like. So let's start off and refresh. And I'm now going to hit the generate invoice button on our review of the marketing strategy. So now PDF Potion is going to go away and do its thing and is going to upload the resulting PDF to our database. So I'm going to go to my database here. I'm going to go to File Manager and I'm going to go to Refresh just to get the latest files in there. And I'm seeing the time by me as 3.43 p.m. So let's see if we have, yep, yeah, we have a PDF that was just created. And if we click on that, what we'll see is we have our invoice page but we don't have the dynamic data. So we've made some progress, but obviously we want to have a bit more detail on this. So you can see here, we have the invoice, we have the logo, and we have the kind of outline of what we need, but we need to populate uh, the issue two, which is the customer name, and then the job details itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. I'm gonna go back to my create PDF action, which is going to be linked to that generate invoice button so we'll click on that and if we just find that so what we need to do is essentially tell pdf potion that we want to display dynamic data on this page and you might remember back on my invoice page i'm just going to open up a new editor tab here so we can flick between the two you might remember on the invoice page i actually set the type of data on that to be invoice and if I go into, and maybe just have a look at that one more time, you can see that's invoice. And maybe just to give an example, if I did go into my database and I went to that latest invoice we created, um, you'll see we actually have set the review of marketing strategy to be the job name. And if I take the unique ID of that, and then I change this to go to the invoice page and then paste in the unique ID, what we're actually going to see is we do get the dynamic data displaying. So that's kind of the trick here. We need to provide PDF Potion with the unique identifier to tell us, look, that's the invoice we want to create. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to my page name. I'm going to add in a forward slash. And then rather than just pasting in the unique identifier like that, we obviously want to make it dynamic. So what you can do is simply insert dynamic data. Results of step one, it's unique ID. So let's try that again. And hopefully this time when we create our PDF, we're going to have our dynamic data displayed, generate invoice, again, PDF function going away to do its thing in the background. It does take a few seconds just because there's quite a bit happening. But if we go back to our database and we go to file manager and we go to refresh, in fact, I think it was there already, but we should see that we have this new invoice. And this time, we do have the dynamic data. We have the customer name inside there. We have the job name, the cost. That's actually a hard-coded value there. I can see I put input incorrectly. But that's how you display dynamic data on the page of your bubble app that you're converting to a PDF. But the next thing we want to do is actually give users access to this PDF because at the moment, we're only able to access it by the file manager. So it's not much use to anyone. And you might remember back on our dashboard, we had this field in our create PDF action, the callback URL. And this is really key for linking the PDF we're creating to an entry in our database and giving access to the user. We're gonna use a backend workflow to process the PDF and allow it to be accessed. Now, in order to use this feature, you're going to need to be on a paid bubble plan and enable backend workflows, which you can do in the API section of your editor. Once you've done that, you can go to backend workflows and we're going to create a new API workflow. And I'm going to call this get PDF. You're going to need to expose it as a public API workflow and we're going to run it without authentication. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to add two parameters in here. The first one is ID, 
and this is going to be the unique ID that we pass through in the create PDF action. And then the second one is going to be link, which is going to be the URL that we're going to get for this PDF. Now you must put in ID and link exactly like this. There is no room for your kind of own way of doing it. So just make sure that you have it spelled exactly like that. But once you have that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to make changes to a thing. We're going to do a search for an invoice. We're going to get the very first invoice in our database where where the unique ID is equal to ID that we're passing through. So again, this is how we're linking a report that we created on the front end with processing the PDF on the back end. Once we have that, what we're going to do is we're simply going to change the link field to be equal to the link value that PDF Potion is going to pass back to your backend workflow. So now that we have this backend workflow set up, we need to let PDF Potion know about it. And the best way to do this is to use that callback URL field. And what you can do is if you go to the settings tab of your editor and you go to the API section, I recommend copying the workflow API root URL here, then going back to your dashboard or wherever you're generating those PDFs from. And in create PDF, you're going to paste that in there. And then at the very end, you're going to put in forward slash and the name of the backend workflow. So in our case, that was get PDF, but you may have called yours something different. Now, to make life easier for yourself, I would recommend getting rid of this hard-coded um, URL here, which represents your app. And instead, I will highlight everything up to just before the API, including the forward slash, and simply put in website home URL. That's going to make it easy to upload the PDFs to your live versus your dev database, and it just keeps things a lot cleaner. Okay, let's try this one more time. So let's go back to our dashboard, refresh that, and let's create a PDF for our consultation job this time. So we're going to hit generate invoice. Again, PDF Ocean is going to go in the background and do its thing. I'm not actually expecting to be able to download the PDF in the browser here, but we're going to be a step closer. And if I go back to my database, and if I go to app data, you'll see here our newest invoice. We have the customer name, we have consultation, and importantly, this link field here, there actually is a value in it, whereas with the other previous two ones we created, it did not. And if we open that link up, which we can do here, you'll see it's actually a PDF of that invoice that we created, the page in our bubble app that we've been targeting. And what I'm going to do to allow the user to download this in their browser is something very simple. I'm going to go back to my dashboard page. I'm going to create a new workflow and I'm simply going to call it custom event. Or I'm not going to call it a custom event. It is going to be a custom event. And I'm going to call it download PDF. We're going to add in a new parameter. I'm going to call this invoice and it's going to be of type invoice. And then all we're going to do is we're simply going to go to download PDF and the link is going to be invoices link and file name can be whatever you want let's just say test invoice for now and we want to trigger this custom event when the link appears in our database and bubble has a really nice action that lets you do this and if we go back to our generate invoice flow what we're going to do here is we're going to go under custom events we're going to say trigger a custom event when data changes the custom event is that download PDF event that we just did. The thing we're watching is the invoice that we created here in step one. And the field we're watching is the link value. So when the link value goes from nothing to the URL of the PDF, we're going to download it in our browser. So let's try that one more time. Let's do the competitor analysis study this time. So again, generating the invoice sending off the action to PDF Potion. Again, this will take a few seconds just because there's quite a bit going on in the background. And I'm gonna give you a tip on how best to present that in a minute. But you can see there we have our PDF and we have our competitor analysis and we have our PDF of the page. So that's how you create PDFs of pages in your bubble app. One more trick maybe before we end is I've added another element to our uh, dashboard page here, which is this PDF loading screen. And because there was a kind of slight delay there between clicking the button and getting the PDF, one trick I like to do is that when we are clicking the button to generate the PDF, just before that, I like to show an element, which is the loading screen. 
and then once the report is downloaded i want to hide that again just kind of you know the process has been completed so let me just show you how that looks right through our very first one create a pdf of that page and you can see the user can't actually access anything behind the floating group now but when the pdf downloads here which is just done the loading screen goes away and the user has access to their pdf so that's how you generate pdfs of pages in your bubble app if you have any questions you can let us know in the comment section